So Cambridge Analytica, the marketing research firm embroiled in the Facebook election scandal, is shutting down. It has ceased all of its operations and is expected to file for bankruptcy. Now, the company has not admitted any wrongdoing, but in a statement released, they said the following. The siege of media coverage has driven away virtually all of the company's customers and suppliers. As a result, it has been determined that it is no longer viable to continue operating the business. Now, if you're not too familiar with Cambridge Analytica and their marketing research methods, an employee actually gave us a little bit of insight about how the company worked and some of their tactics. Take a look. This app then crawls through your social network and captures all of that data. Also, so by you filling out my survey, I capture 300 records on average, right? And so that means that all of a sudden, I only need to engage 50,000, 70,000, 100,000 people to get a really big data set really quickly. So while only about 300,000 people filled out the company's survey and accepted that their data be shared with the company, because these 300,000 or so people shared their data, they also inadvertently shared their friends' data and their friends on Facebook were completely unaware of this. This is what people are very upset about that their data may have been used in political ads and campaigns that they did not consent to. Yeah, this is like the old, in the early days of HIV, they talked about the fact that, you know, everyone you have sex with, uh, you're having sex with everyone that they had sex with. And, you know, that's how the virus uh, spread. In this case- Thanks uh, for the visual. This suggests, well, I uh, believe me, the visual can get a lot worse than that. Uh, the, it, it, it's, it's how this uh, entire uh, data mining has spread. And and so, and by the way, I like that we've reached a point in the culture, I really mean it, I mean I literally like it, that the authority in this story, who we got a little information and detail from, has that wild do with the pink, and <laughs> it doesn't actually undercut his credibility, it actually reinforces his credibility, yes. meaning, you know, in the, in the new world of technology, there's no dress code, there's nothing. Like, this is a more credible source. So uh, I just, that, it's an aside, but I kind of like that moment. Uh, let's make no mistake, though. Cambridge Analytica is, uh, it may be shutting down or it may, uh, but I think what's, what's happening here is a little what happened with Blackwater. I uh, was literally going to say that, the too. Pri yeah, the private military service, Blackwater, uh, they closed down and they reconstitute themselves. There's a lot of different things, different companies that continue to do the, the, the same paramilitary operations that are both domestic and foreign. So uh, I think that's what's going to happen here with Cambridge Analytica. They're closing down, but they've already reopened in another form under another name. So uh, I, I don't, I'm not particularly encouraged by this at all. Right, right. Uh, public condemnation doesn't equal demise or ultimate demise as well. And, it, you know, for, for folks that don't know, Eric Prince behind Blackwater moves to Abu Dhabi, forms this company called EX something, and it probably it's on its third or fourth iteration at this point to evade any sort of public scrutiny linking him to um, a private mercenary company. So yes, I completely agree with that. And um, the issue is that folks are probably gonna get away with what they have done and they're not gonna be held culpable. I mean, there's this aggregate IQ as well, um, other sort of companies. And I will say that I do feel really, really shame, shameful that I took that personality test of which city that I thought that I belonged to. Um, because this, that, that's, that's what this was mining. But the last thing I'll also say is that um, for as much as this is getting, um, is being stigmatized, Cambridge Analytica, because it intervenes with our liberal democratic narrative, we've also evaded in drawing attention to another company that was also accused of data mining, um, Geophidia. It was in the news a couple of years ago, and I wish it got as much attention that Cambridge Analytica did, and I'll tell you why it didn't. Geophidia mined people's um, profiles from Facebook who had priors, so priors in a legal law enforcement sense, and sent it to law enforcement so that law enforcement would be able to pool people's identities when they were at protests to see if they could go after them based on whether or not they had prior. So clearly that's affecting a certain kind of population instead of a certain kind of narrative we have our, about ourselves as an America that has free and fair elections. So while you all are, yeah, while you all are holding Cambridge Analytica to the fire and watching more, more, more as well, 
please do look up what happened with Geophilia and also Color of Change's campaign trying to highlight the horrendous things that the, this company has done as well. Wow, that's, yeah, that's, that's extraordinary. I didn't know that. I, I think it's interesting uh, as you're speaking, I'm thinking, wow, it's worth reminding us all that when you take that personality test on Facebook and it's mm -hmm. free, or when you sign up for Facebook and it's free, nothing's free. When you go on Google and it's a free search, it's not free. It's keeping track of your search. Your data, who you are on Facebook, how you make contributions to Facebook, all of your posts, even you taking that personality test, which is sort of the, the you know, bald-faced example of it that we've, we've heard from uh, Cambridge Analytica, all those things are being monetized. If you're not paying for it, then you're paying for it another way. And it just, again, it's something to keep in mind moving forward. Nothing is free. If you're not paying for it, you're paying for it with data when it comes to technology. Right. So, and we all need to be wary of companies like this that, like you say, offer us a free product generally, because really what they're, the, the cost is unknown. Now, in this particular case with Cambridge Analytica, I guess the silver lining might be that their ads likely did not work very well. So there isn't any research available currently that says that people are good at taking this data and turning it into compelling ads that will sway your political preferences. There is some evidence that they can sway your um, purchasing uh, actions as well as your beliefs that when they're associated with your personality. So if ads are targeted towards your personality, they may influence your purchase of a beauty product, but there's very little evidence that they can influence who you vote for, not for decisions that big. So that may be the silver lining here. Right, well, I mean, I would say too that unfortunately we sometimes don't take an interdisciplinary approach around this. So it might be a little bit of influence from that and influence from possible like Russian collusion and influence from right. all these other different vectors. And that's what I'm interested in seeing is some sort of study that combines all those variables to see what produced a certain outcome. But I'll also note, because we love to see ourselves as a, again, a free liberal democracy that, that we feel especially hurt when we've done this for decades in other countries. So I'd love to see us exposing and being transparent of that fact if we really want to solve the intervention in our own elections. Well, the, the election intervention, there's no question you're right. I mean, my God, the United States is, uh, we do it the old fashioned way <laughs> where we just replace uh, leaders around the world, or we do it we the new fashioned way with our own sort of uh, uh, technologies. But uh, this, is a, this is a situation in which if you're served advertisements, as you're saying, which is interesting, that bothers me less than being served information or disinformation. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's really what's happening now. They're carpet bombing Facebook and other social media sites with, with news that is not accurate and is being churned out like sausage links around the world and then distributed across these social network platforms. Well, and, and, and was also marketing themselves as being able to sway elections based on the content that they were producing in terms of online advertising. And they were saying they were, you know, a, um, a forerunner in, the, in their field. So I think that, that should be up for public debate. Right, whether or not it influenced elections or even the Brexit vote, I mean, there's talk about it in that context. Yes. Uh, jury might still be out on that, uh, although, uh, as you say, we don't really know, so let's just put it aside. But certainly that, again, that, that news or information that's served to you because they know certain things about you from an analytic right. standpoint, that could be very dangerous. And I, I right. just, sorry, just last thing, um, because as journalists, we know that Facebook is not a publisher, it won't own the fact that they're a publisher, so they won't go to due diligence to mine the, the information that it's on its site or being paid for to be on its site. So I think that's what I mean by it needs to be up for public debate, is whether or not, if Facebook is a publisher, then it needs to go through all this sort of content. If it's not, then there needs to be a different sort of conversation to have in terms of what information is available and what information can be bought. Two easy ways to follow Young Turks. One is hit the subscribe button down below, uh, then you're a TYT subscriber. And second is ring the bell. And when you do that on YouTube, you're notified of our videos.